my friends, we're gonna be getting into this tutorial on this look really quickly using everything that I loved this month in the month of January last month. But I also wanna tell you that I am putting in here quite a few fails. There were a few high-end things that I just was not that happy about. There's high-end, there's drugstore, they're super affordable. We go all over the gamut today. I hope that you stick with me and watch me do this tutorial. The next frame that you see of me is gonna be barefaced. Don't nobody get scared. Hang on, we're coming right back. All right, so this doesn't take too long. We're gonna dive into it fairly quickly. The two primers that I tried this month are from NYX. This is the Marshmallow Primer, and then the Skin Quench Hydrating Primer from Milani. The other one that I tried that I showed in an earlier review was from LA Girl, and it was basically just a luminescence. It wasn't um, more along the lines of pore filling or keeping your makeup on or anything, but these two I have tried. The NYX does have a fragrance in it, quite strong. It smells just like marshmallows, but it does have a strong fragrance in it and I will show you what that looks like. It's just white and it feels very much like the Milani one does and I will just go ahead and put that one on this side and I'll show you that up close. It's really a nice looking bottle there and then I will show you the Milani one right here and I have put it on my hand right there. It's the same consistency. I think I like this one a little bit better for pore, uh, pore filling and also for the longevity and hydration. I really like the feel of of this one better than I do like the NYX one. This one has a little bit more slip, just so you know. And so this one feels a little bit more like primer. This one feels more like hydration. I'm gonna use my regular primer from Fenty Beauty. This is how much I'm gonna use, just a dot of it. This um, I've been using forever. You guys have heard about it a million times. I really don't delve into many other primers because I love the way that this just takes all of that darkness. Look at the difference between the two eyes. It takes all of that darkness and just gets rid of it. So really, really love this stuff. I tried two concealers this month. This one is a high-end one from Jouer. It is their pen concealer. It's got a little diamond shape right there. And then I tried the Incognito from Wet n Wild. Huge price difference, yes I know. I really like the Wet n Wild one. I love that it is so, I love that it just kind of melts into the skin without having too much of a problem. Now that is all I use right there and then I just dot it around with my brush. And then I'm gonna clean off the brush and I'm gonna use it for this other side. And then the Jouer one, I just push it up a little bit. It's like a pump dispenser there. And then I just take some of it on my brush and it's very creamy. It doesn't um, have the consistency of a liquid at all. It is a little bit thicker, so you don't seem to need to use as much. Um, I'm not crazy about this color. Of course, I'm not crazy about the Wet n Wild's color either, but I do have to work this a little bit more than you do normally with other liquid products like the wet and wild one but i like it i really do it's pretty on the skin and once i get done with my little routine i don't have it um, creasing uh, I was really afraid of that. I was really afraid of the creasing because this is such a thicker product, but I really have noticed that it's been pretty good. If I was gonna choose between the two of these, I don't really have a favorite. I would almost, almost like to see them together because it really would be a pretty product. You would have that full coverage with the creaminess, I don't know. I wish that somewhere along the line somebody could come up with that perfect concealer. I'm still on the hunt for the rest of my life. All right, now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and use some setting spray. I learned also this month that using a brush to put your setting spray on is fantastic. I got the Professional Super Setter, the Long Lasting Pore Blurring Setting Spray from Benefit. I really like it. It's very much like the Charlotte Tilbury. Let me tell you really quickly. This is four ounces for $30. And I think it works out to be, wait a minute, it's 32. It works out to be $8 an ounce, okay? And then the Charlotte Tilbury, you get 3.3 ounces for $35. And that works out to be $10 and change for for an ounce. So each of these is pretty spendy, eight to $10. This one is 1.6 ounces for like, 
five dollars six dollars something like that this one also has fragrance in it this is by the way this is the essence hello good stuff three in one face mist face mist with watermelon extract i really like this one a lot it does have that watermelon fragrance it does say that on it that it does have fragrance so if you don't like that um definitely don't get it but it is nice for somebody that has dry skin like i do now i'm just going to spray it on the brush just put two sprays on there fairly closely I love this because you don't waste setting spray. It's so cool. And I am just giving all kinds of tips here and I should just be being quiet and just reviewing products. Put my camera down. Okay, so then I'm just gonna pat it all over and I'm gonna pay attention to that under eye area because I'm not gonna use powder. I'm gonna turn that over and spray the other side of that brush with the Benefit. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this side. Now, honestly, I love the Benefit and I love the Charlotte Tilbury because they do have those little polymers in there that go across your skin and that just kind of melds all of your makeup together. It's really pretty. I really do like it, but I think that the, I just turned the brush over so I could get the essence on this side. I think that the essence does a great job as well and not so much money. And then for eyebrows, my e.l.f. Wow Brow. It's a favorite every month. What can I say? I'm a creature of habit and I love this stuff. It goes into the eyebrows and it just makes them so wispy and catches the little hair that you have there on your eyebrow and deposits little fibers into there. And it's the perfect color for me. Make sure I put that up on the screen. I believe it's taupe. It lasts forever. I had a little tube of this and it just lasted and lasted. If you're somebody that is watching me do detailed work and you're wondering why I shake, it is because I have a disability and everybody just hates it when I have to disclaimer that, but I will inev ev inevitably get someone in the comments ask me, why are you shaking so bad? Are you nervous? I'm not nervous. I have a palsy in my hands that is a disability, but I work with it because it's what I've been forever and it doesn't hold me back. All right, now I'm going to go into the waterline with this Flower Beauty Eye Brightening Pencil or um, just a liner. And I really like this. It really helps to hide the redness that is in my waterline. I'm going to keep this look really simple. I'm going to go in with this e.l.f. Bite Size Palette, and I can't remember which one this is. I'll throw it up on the screen because I don't have my glasses. And I'm going to go in with this Saddle Brown color right here. And I'm just going to use a really fluffy brush, and I'm just going to do a bit of transition shading. Next, I'm going to take the light color with my finger. I'm just going to run that across my lid. I'm going to actually go all the way across the lid today because I want to put the green out here just a little bit. I'm going to take a small little paddle brush and I'm going to go into that same color and I'm going to just do my inner corner here. I'm going to take my rag and clean off that brush really quick and I'm going to go into the green. And then I'm going to go in about, I guess, about two-thirds of the way. And I'm just going to make that the highlight color of the lid. So right there in the middle. Such a pretty green. Oh, my goodness. I love that. It's really icy. Then I'm going to go in with an angled shader brush. And I'm just going to go into that dark color. And I'm going to darken up the outer bit just a tiny bit, not a lot. And I'm going to deposit it and then go to the other side and deposit the color there. And I'm going to just work back and forth each eye to eye. That way I won't get too much color. I have already feel like I've gotten too much color. But I'm just working back and forth with the two of them until I get that blended. Now I'm going to go back in with that fluffy brush and I'm going to blend everything together. And then I have a straight liner brush that I'm going to go into the dark uh brown with also. I'm going to just take a bit of that color and I'm just going to smudge it across my bottom lash line and then connect it with the outer part. I'm also going to point you all to my video that I did this month on contouring. So I'm not going to show you this because this isn't a new product, but I'm going to do my contouring right now. So if you're wondering about the contouring, how I did that while I was off camera, I will point you to that video. 
This is from Catrice. This is their contouring stick. So I'm going to take my fan kabuki brush and I do have a link to one that is very similar to this. It's almost identical, but this one has been sold out forever. But I will take my fan kabuki brush. Now, if I got too much, I'm going to take it on my hand. Look, I did get a lot. So I don't want to like go in ham with that right away onto my face. So I'm going to just very lightly start touching my forehead and start warming that up. And then I'm going to go right over here to my cheek. I'm going to warm those cheeks up a little bit and down my nose and then across the cheeks just a little bit to warm them up and the chin. Every, everywhere where the light hits is where you want to warm up. So I go right on top of that contouring. Now for blush, I tried the new Rare Beauty Cream Blushes. And there it is. And I'm just using a stipple brush. This is the only one I tried. I do like this. I don't like it as well as the Fenty Beauty ones though. So you guys know. And I don't like it as much as I do like the e.l.f. Multi-Stick. I still like that so much. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put this on right over top of that bronzer and pull it all together up around the face. And today, I can't believe I did this, but I forgot my highlighter before my blush. I never do that. I don't know why I forgot that today. So the Catrice blush is going on there. This is, I think it's called more than a highlighter. And this is just a really bendy, fluffy brush from Profusion that I got one time when I ordered off of their website. I love this thing. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna put it all over because normally, I really like the highlighter underneath that gives such a soft, subtle glow. And I didn't put a ton on my brush, but I am kind of just really, look how that bendy this is. So I'm not using a lot of pressure. I can't because that brush isn't dense at all. It's just really airy. So it's just gonna really give a really soft, subtle glow. I will take a little bit of that on my fingers, put it right here in my Cupid's bow. So that is the Catrice More Than A Glow, and I think this one is in the rose color, and I think they have a champagne one as well. Love that. Koki Cosmetics was kind enough to send me their entire color sh shade range of their lip liners. I was so thankful for that. That was so kind of them. So this one is called Plum Purple, and it's the one I'm going to use to line my lips. And then this other one is called, the, it's big enough for me to be able to see, Rosy Pink. And I'm going to fill in with that one. And we're going to see what we get with those two. I have tried these separately, but not together. This is a very creamy formula. It's an automatic liner. It's a very fine point. And I love that about them. And I love that these stay on. For a creamy liner that is a gel formula, these stay on and hug the lips so good. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to do this and then I'm going to put the pink on. I can't talk while I'm doing it though. So you're just going to have to watch me do it. Those two together give such a pretty ombre effect. And then I'm just going over it with my uh, finger to just pat in and blend a little bit better. But the two together are quite pretty, I think, and I like that formula. And then this isn't anything new either. This is the Maybelline Lifter Gloss, and I'm just gonna go over. And yeah, I really like that lip combo. It's really pretty. All right, before I finish with my eyelashes, I'm gonna review these five mascaras. I actually have five that I picked up this month. So first is the Lancome Eye Doll Lash. It has a uh, kind of a bendy wand on it, and it has a little bit of a curve on it. I do like this. It does fan everything out. It doesn't work real well on the bottom lash line. Actually, none of these do because I go back to my tried and true benefit. They're real. It grabs all my lashes underneath and it separates them, makes them look super long, and it has the perfect wand. Okay, aside from that, the Lancome has a good formula if you want to use it on your top lashes. I do like the formula. I do think this is a good mascara. It's not the best mascara that I tried this month, though. I also tried from NARS. This is the worst mascara I tried this month. This was a very fat wand. It has the natural bristles on it. Some people really like that. This pulled out too much. It's just goopy as it comes out. And I, I don't have time to sit there and rub and rub and rub. And I'm not a fan of the natural bristles. I like the plastic ones a little bit better because it does separate my lashes a little bit more. So that's what I do. This formula did smudge really quickly. I was really not happy with this NARS one at all. 
and then I got another one from Went and Wild. This is called Big Papa and um, cool packaging actually on it though. <laughs> and this one, again, that wand comes out so goopy. It is the hourglass one. However, it does taper a ton on that very point. And that's nice about it. I like this one. It does build up really good. But again, I can't get that super length and that super definition that I like out of my eyelashes because I don't have hugely thick eyelashes, but I have really long eyelashes. So anything that doesn't really stick with me and get that really big length really drives me crazy. So if you're somebody that's just looking for volume, not length, this is, might be the one that you really like. The two that I'm going to show you today, I'm going to do e.l.f. on this side and I'm going to do essence on I'm going to do elf on this side and I'm going to do essence on this side so you can see these two together. I really do like both of these. However, I do think that the essence 24 hour one really lasts a lot longer. The elf one is a good one too. This is called lash and loud or yeah, something like that. Lash yeah, lash it loud. And it's it's a great mascara. I think both of them are really good. So if you don't have where you can get essence, you might really like this elf one. I would say it's a really close runner up. So I'm done talking. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put an eyeliner on, which is the Physicians Formula Waterproof, just a pen liner. I love this one. I've had it forever. And I'm going to put that on, curl my lashes and put two coats on each eye. I'll be right back with you. I realized after I got my lashes on that I hadn't shown you guys the brushes. So this one is the Essence one. Again, these are the plastic bristle brushes, both of these. This one has a little bit of a curve to it. And then the Essence one, I'm sorry, and then the e.l.f. one is just straight up and down, a little bit of a taper at the end there. And look at those lashes though. Again, I put the Essence one on this side and the e.l.f. one on this side so that you guys know I like them both, but the bottom lashes are brought to you courtesy of Benefit. They're real. This is the only mascara that I've ever found that does not smudge on me. And also, if you take a look at that bristle, this is again the plastic bristles, but that bottom has little spikes on it. It catches everyone. I've never been able to do this and go down with my lashes on the bottom because I do shake and I have a mess by the end of that. So I have to tilt it straight up and down and go across like this and it catches all of those and it lengthens them so well. So, and no smudging, absolutely no smudging. And there really wasn't a lot of smudging. I do try one day where I do, you know, these mascaras underneath my eyes because I realize everybody doesn't have the luxury of going out and buying a different mascara, hello. But if you're interested, these did do pretty good as far as underneath the eyes. But on the top, these are fabulous as far as building, no flaking, no smudging on the top, holding the curl all day. Both of these do. It's so good. So yeah, that's what they look like at the end. To round up this review, I want to show you something that I really was quite impressed with this month. This is a new powder from Becca. This is called Light Shifter Finishing Veil. Um, and it's in one. Okay. Mine's in probably the lightest shade they have. And I like this a lot. Packaging's beautiful on it. Becca does a great job with their packaging. This did have an imprint on it, so the imprint's all gone now, and I've used it a ton. I will tell you what is so different about this. When I put it on my finger right there, it looks like it might have some color in it, right? This is the lightest, finest, most airy powder I think I've ever seen. This, for the first time in my entire life of doing makeup, 40 plus years, I really can put this on top of my other makeup and it doesn't look bad at all. It doesn't make me look dry throughout the day. It is so fine and so airy and so light. I just, I can't even describe to you. It has no shimmer in it whatsoever, no glow, nothing like that. It's just an uber, uber light powder. Now, you know when you would normally do this with your powder that you have, you would be getting up a ton of product. There's not a ton of product coming on there. It's so different. I really put my finger on or really describe what it is about it that is so different. But I'm gonna just show you really quickly what it does. Now, I'm just gonna buff it in to my big pores right through here. It does the blurring and a little bit of that soft focus without ever getting cakey. I mean, I could go at this like, lots. I mean, I could put layer after layer after layer on here and it's not going to look cakey. It just melts seamlessly in with your makeup on your skin. 
it is so beautiful it really truly is a different product you know i'm going to be on the hunt for something at the drugstore like this but i've never seen anything even my beloved number seven lift light and Lum lift and illuminate powder can't remember which one it is but it's thicker than this it's heavier than this this is just the most light product i think i've ever seen in a powder a setting powder it's so different i can't I, there's no way to put it until you actually feel it and you put your finger in there because once you even put your finger in there and even though it looks like I've got a lot on my finger, I go like this. I'm like, where's the powder? But it's there. It's doing the finishing. I mean, I can see that finger is brighter and it just looks different than the other fingers that I've used it that I didn't use it on. What the? I'm just really surprised at this. So for so makeup, that's going to round everything out. I hope that you did enjoy this review today. This is me. This is the finished look. I hope that you did enjoy it. Thanks so much for spending a t bit of your time with me. Give it a thumbs up. What this month did you guys enjoy seeing? I would really love to hear that from you in the comments below. Like I said, thank you, everybody. I love you. I will talk to you soon in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.